Hey everybody, welcome back to Code a Responsive Website with Bootstrap 3. This video is called Coding the Navbar. In this video, we are going to begin coding the HTML for the Bootstrap 3 Navbar, the one that you see on the top of the website right here. So let's go back to our code editor. And in the previous video, we coded the structure, the general layout and structure in our HTML. This doesn't actually show us anything. If you were to open your website right now, you could see the only thing that's up there is an empty nav bar. And the reason why you see that is because the nav bar has some CSS attached to it. It has uh, a background color and it's fixed to the top, but there's currently nothing there. So the only thing we see is our nav bar background. So we're going to code everything inside of that nav bar. So back to our code editor and we're going to start coding with in our navbar HTML. And in the code chunks folder, this is what we will be coding, the navbar right here. As I said before, you can copy and paste this right in there if you just want to see what it looks like. But uh, I would recommend trying to follow along and hand coding it because you will learn better that way. And then you can reference this later to see if you have any bugs or mistakes. All right, so first up, inside of our nav bar, we're gonna to want to add a div with the class of container. Remember to close that div. The reason why we want that is because within our website, we want to have the content of the nav bar be within a container. We want it to be fixed within this area, not full width like the rest of the nav bar background. So that we do that by adding the class of container. And what we're going to do now is add the navbar brand or the logo. So A with the class of navbar dash brand. That's a CSS, uh, Bootstrap 3 CSS class. href, we'll just put the pound sign for now. Actually, you know what? Do a forward slash. That means it goes back to the root of the website or the home page. Close that A tag. Within that, we want to add an image. The source is images slash logo.png. Always use the alt and explain what it is. Uh, in the images folder, you can see we have logo. So we are going to uh, reference that file right here. So if you save that and open your website again, refresh, you can see your logo sitting pretty right in the middle. All right, let's tab that in and let's go down below that. We're gonna to want to add the content of the nav bar, all of the nav items, the drop downs, and so on and so forth. So div with the class of nav-collapse. That is a bootstrap three CSS class, which allows our nav bar to be responsive. So when you shrink it to mobile size, like in the final website, you'll see the nav bar is collapsed. And we open it just by clicking this little toggle button. Back to our code. So nav collapse, we're also gonna add the class of collapse. Just more bootstrap three classes to add. Nav bar dash responsive dash collapse. I know you're probably thinking this is a lot of CSS classes, how am I gonna remember all this? All you need to do is just go to the getbootstrap.com website and go to components and click on navbar. And this has everything you need to know in terms of the navbar and all the cool stuff you could do with it. So add all those classes, close that div, and nav collapse. Within that, we're going to add an unordered list. And we're going to give that unordered list the class of nav and navbar dash nav. And nav. Within that, we're going to add our first nav item. So now we can actually start putting some items in there. Li with the class of active. And the reason why we want to have it be active is because I want to show you a nav item with the active class. And we're going to add an a tag home. So now if you save that and go back to your website, you should have a home item. Add another one of these. This one don't add the class of active because you only want one. 
This one will be services. And then we're going to close this UL. So there's actually going to be a lot more happening. We're going to be changing this to a drop down menu, but we're going to do that in the next lecture because it requires a little bit more code. So we're going to move on and we'll do this a little later to the next element in the page, which is the search input. So let's add that another bootstrap three feature after the UL of nav. Let's add a form. Close that form tag and give the form the class of navbar form and navbar form. And let's add an input within the form. The type will be text class form control. This is a, a bootstrap three class placeholder. Search this site. The placeholder is what you'll see as a hint of what you should type in the input since we don't have a label explaining what it is. It's kind of a forward thinking way of doing this rather than having more elements. We try and be really minimal and just add a placeholder. Add a button tag, the type of submit, the class of button and button default. Now just a quick note about buttons and the classes. If you go to the Bootstrap 3 website, under CSS, there should be a section called buttons. Get bootstrap.com slash CSS, click on buttons. This is all of the pre-designed, pre-styled buttons you can use in Twitter Bootstrap. Obviously, you can customize these as much as you want with your own CSS, but this is what is baked in to Bootstrap 3. So you have default, primary success, info, warning, and danger, and link. They've just named them. These names are kind of arbitrary, but you need to use the classes in order to, to achieve these styles. And it's really easy. So button, type, button, class, btn, and btn-default gets you this. And then you can go on so forth and get the uh, button, button primary, button success, button info, warning, danger, and then button link. So right here in the Bootstrap 3 docs, you can read and do everything that you want to do with these buttons and see everything that they offer. Large buttons, small buttons, mini buttons, block level buttons that expand the full width of the parent element, buttons that are disabled so you can't click on them, and basically everything that you could want in a button, almost. And we have a button with the class of button and button default. We want that default button. Let's uh, close that button tag. Within the button, we are going to use the bootstrap glyph icons font icon. So span, close that span tag. And the class of this span is going to be glyph icon and glyph icon dash search. So now if I save this, hit refresh, you'll see that the form shows up here and then you have the glyph icon, the little um, search magnifying glass. So I use the class glyph icon and glyph icon search and that got me this icon. So right now this kind of looks a little funny, um, but all we need to do is just add a little bit of CSS to make this look better. So if you were to go to your includes folder, CSS folder, and click on your styles, under the navbar label, let's add a style for that specific element. Let's actually, to be more specific, give this an ID of search input. Save that, and let's select that in our CSS, search input. Give it the width of 200 pixels and save that. So now, Let's go back to our website and see what it looks like. So there we go. That looks much better. It's smaller and it has the button on the side here. So let's keep going. And next we're going to add the my account link. We're not going to add the drop down right now. We're going to do that in the next lecture, but we're going to add this link and get it to sit way over here on the right, not just stacking on the left here like all the rest of these elements. And the way we do that, after the form, let's add an unordered list. Close that list so you don't forget. 
the class of nav, nav bar dash nav, and pull dash right, pull right. What that's going to do is just going to add the, the CSS style of float right. So it's going to float that element to the right side of the nav bar. Let's close this. Okay. And inside of that, let's just add an li item and an a. And we're going to just say my account. And before that, I believe we had an icon. So we're going to use another glyph icon. So span, give that span the class of glyph icon. So you can access all of the glyph icons. And also another class to be more specific, glyph icon dash user. So now if I save that, my account link and the little user icon. Now this looks a little funny. This search uh, th this part of the nav looks like it's higher than this part this part seems to be just sitting down on another row the reason why that is is because this form isn't floated left and this is floated right so it can't float up to, on the same horizontal level as this element because this is not allowing it to because it, it doesn't have the CSS style of float left so if we add uh, a specific Bootstrap 3 class to this whole form, we can make this look better. So there is a pull right, but there is also a pull left. So add pull left to the form, and uh, let's see what that looks like. That looks much better. So there we go. We already have something good going here. So just a really quick recap. We added the nav bar whole wrapper. We added a container within the navbar. We added the navbar brand. And we added the container, uh, sorry, the collapse, the nav collapse container that will allow these links to collapse when they're responsive. Within that, we added a unordered, unordered list with the class of nav. And we added the home and services items. Then we added the form with the search input. And then we added another unordered list that was pulled right that has the my account link to the far right. So there's still quite a bit more we need to do with this nav bar, but we're going to do that in the next lecture. And what that will be is we'll add the drop down menu for the services item and the drop down menu for the my account item. And we'll also do a couple quick things to make this navbar look really nice when it's responsive. So I'll see you in that lecture.